Hi everyone and welcome to today's demonstration. Today we'll take a deeper dive into White Source Prioritize and see how it can significantly improve your security and be able to prioritize vulnerabilities which are actually being exposed in your application, leaving you open for attack or exploit of that vulnerability. To do this, we're going to use WebGoat, which is a purposely insecure Java application. And to perform the prioritized scan, we're going to wrap this into Azure DevOps using the CI CD pipelines. My name is Luke Brogan, and I'm one of the solution engineers here at WhiteSource. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm going to go over to the web browser, sign into the WhiteSource user interface. Here, I've already performed the scan of WebGoat using the unified agent. And I've just marked that up here as the product name. So from the initial scan, first of all, we have the software bill of material. So 209 open source components make up WebGoat. We also have submodules in the application. So using that single scan, we were able to iterate through all these modules to detect vulnerabilities and licenses that are being used. In terms of high level metrics, we have 74 components with upgrade paths. We have several uh, components which have been deployed multiple times with different versions. So we might want to investigate that for software quality. There's also 73 components with multiple licenses available. So are these using high risk sort of GPLs or are they using open source friendly components such as MITs? So that'd be worth checking out, of course. Finally, we have the security vulnerabilities. So there's over a thousand vulnerabilities for this project. And that breaks down into high, medium, and low severity items. Now, traditionally, we would prioritize high severity vulnerabilities because they pose the biggest risk to the application, most importantly, the organization as well. However, when you see lots of vulnerabilities, like 866, then there could be many different components which require lots of upgrades, which can cost us a lot of time. So one question we get asked quite a lot is, how do we know if this vulnerability is actually real? How is it being presented? Could it be leveraged in an attack? Is it exposed in any way? So we have a solution for that, and that's white source prioritize. So prioritize will perform data trace analysis on your code, and it will work out if there's any function or procedure which is exposing that vulnerability. So from that, we have the red shield, which are vulnerabilities which are being exposed and could be leveraged in an attack. These items should be remediated as soon as possible, ideally within the current sprint or the next software sprint cycle. On the flip side, we then have green shield, which are vulnerabilities which exist but they're not being exposed in a way through a functional procedure, which could be leveraged. Typically the red shield vulnerabilities only make up around five to 10% of an average application's vulnerability list. So that gives you the complete efficiency to concentrate on the vulnerabilities which really matter. And you can fix them much, much sooner because it's only a smaller list of upgrade paths. So not only protecting the application, but also protecting uh, the business and the organization itself. So what we need to do now is run the multi-module analyzer for WebGoat because it has many sub-modules, and then we can perform the effective usage analysis and run prioritize using that unified agent. So let's get started. We head over to Azure DevOps. I'm going to go over to repositories. We already have WebGo imported, and I'm using the branch release 8.1. I'm 
From here, we can go and set up a build, scroll down, and just use a starter pipeline for now. Go ahead and delete its contents. I'm going to head over to Notepad++. And I already have a template available to scan a multi-module Maven project in Azure. Uh, don't worry if your project's different. If you're using uh, sort of like Gradle or you're using uh, a Python-based project, we have a white source uh, GitHub page with all of the templates available. Uh, so whatever language or CI/CD provider you're using, check that out in the description below and basically just copy and paste the templates and adapt as required. So really easy, get that pasted in. Let's take a, a quick walk through uh, exactly what this YAML file is doing. Uh, first of all, we said it was a Maven-based project. So we need to install a certain version of Java, and we need to build and do a clean install of this project using Maven. Secondly, we're building the white source configuration file. So here we have the API key, the user key. We've defined a variable project and product name. I've just hard coded prioritize on the end so we can identify that in the UI. And we're sending to SAS EU as an environment. And finally, these variables at the bottom define the effective usage analyzer. So we want to enable impact analysis and we're setting some Maven specific variables as well. Depending on the language you're using, these will look a bit different, but of course, take a look at the technical documentation that's relevant to your package manager. Finally, at the bottom, we're going to curl the unified agent and the module analyzer. We're going to use the module analyzer to see what modules exist in the project and write that to a multimodule.txt file. We will then display that on the screen so you can see exactly what modules were detected. And finally, we pass that file into the unified agent to perform the scan on each of these projects. So I just need to define my variables. So we do a new variable. First of all, we need the API key, which is going to be a secret. So we head over to the integrate page on the white source application, and copy the API key at the top. Next, we need to add the user key. So we can type that in at the top, click on the add, and head over to your profile, scroll down and generate a new key. We can copy that and paste that into the value and hit save. So we can see both of our variables are now available there. We can go ahead and hit save and run. We can now see the job has been queued. So just click on the job at the top and we can see the standard out from this job taking place. So come back in a few moments time when this is finished for us. So we can see the scan has now successfully taken place in the pipeline. If we just go back to one of the steps here, we can take a look at the output. So just scrolling down, you can see all the modules which have been scanned. But most importantly, the list I wanted to get to uh, was just at the top where we have all of our submodules here, which have all been scanned successfully. So uh, if we now head over to white source, click back on uh, the home area, go to products. Uh, if we just type in the name of the organization, we have the prioritize product. Go ahead, select that and press enter. And you can see the key difference here is we now have data for white source prioritize. So if we go ahead and click on any one of these red shields, um, we can order by the red shield column. We can see all of these vulnerabilities are exposed in the application. And we have the top fix processes on the right-hand side here. 
If we take any one of these, such as the Spring Security Web, click on the details, then not only do we have the description and the remediation process, we've also got the data traces to see exactly where that function or procedure is being called within the code. My name has been Luke Brogan. I hope you've enjoyed this demo. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and let us know. Thank you. Bye-bye.